In this course, I am going to teach you how to install a virtual machine for both a database and Oracle Identity Manager 12214. I intend to allow this course to work for anyone with at the minimum 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's right, you can run this on 16 gigabytes of RAM. Even though my computer here has a whole 64 gigabytes of RAM, I only create my virtual machines as if I was running a 16 gigabyte machine. My name is Nikolai Kalanjin. I used to be an Oracle employee where we worked on customer sites. And this is just a perfect example of the expertise that I used to have to bring to customer sites. In this course, I will teach you how I go about this process and try to build these virtual machines in line with Oracle's best practices. As part of this course, you will get a copy of all these scripts that I've prepared. You could actually just go ahead and copy and paste most of the scripts here without following my videos, and that will leave you with the same virtual machines that I have here. If you need any more help from me, you can find me at enterprisetutor.com forward slash OIM. Okay, let's go and find the certification matrix, which is something that Oracle publishes. So we're gonna open up Chrome and search for Oracle Identity Manager Certification Matrix. Okay, and in the second link, the first link is an XLS to the 11G version, which we are not interested in. So let's go to the second link and we land on this page. This lists a bunch of certifications for lots of different products. We only care about Oracle Identity Manager. However, it's not listed under Oracle. Sorry, if I search for identity, you'll see that it's not listed under Identity Manager unless you search for versions which are before the 12C versions. So for 12C, they've gone and listed the Oracle Identity Manager stuff under the Oracle Fusion middleware umbrella because it is a middleware product. So let's go ahead and click this 12214 version of this document and then open that up. Okay, so let's also open up a new spreadsheet and let's prepare what we're going to be trying to figure out. So we're gonna have a, a list of products and versions. So we know we are going to be installing uh, Oracle Identity Manager and we know we're trying to achieve 12214 because that is the latest version at the current time. And we know that we're going to have a JDK and an operating system and a database. These are the products that we need to figure out the interoperability certified versions as per what Oracle has published in this document. So it's as simple as that. So let's start with uh, the system tab. And if we check the first column, we can choose what we are looking for by filtering it down to all of these are irrelevant. So we're going to deselect that. We're going to click all. And actually, I just saw down here WebLogic Server is relevant because Oracle Identity Manager runs on Oracle WebLogic Server. So it's important to keep that checked when we are analyzing things. So within this uh, section, we can see we've got the release 12214 selected. The processor, let's select our architecture. We are using a Linux x86-64 system for our virtual machines. So Let's filter on that. And then we're left with all the operating systems as well as their corresponding supported JDK versions. So we're getting very close to filling in two of our columns here for two of the products. Let's now filter to the latest operating system. So we are going to be using Oracle Linux rather than Red Hat Linux or the others. So for Oracle Linux, the latest version is Oracle Linux 8. So we may as well use the latest version. There's no reason not to. And you can see both Oracle WebLogic Server and all products are supported for 12.214. If they run on Oracle Linux 8 at the very minimum, the zero update level, this could have been a higher number if we were using one of the other versions, but clearly any version of Oracle Linux 8 is supported at this point. Okay, I am noticing something interesting as well. And that is in the JDK vendor tab. I was expecting an Oracle JDK to be supported. And then when you look at the Oracle WebLogic server product offering, it only talks about uh, a different vendor. And this is strange because I already know from experience that the Oracle JDK is fine. So I'm pretty sure that the all section covers WebLogic server as well. So this must be an additional option for specifically Oracle WebLogic server. So we can just ignore this row and go straight to the all section. So all products that are running on this architecture are certified on Oracle Linux 8 with Oracle JDK 180211. So let's go ahead and open up this other spreadsheet and update it. So we know it's 180211. 
two one one plus, and the OS is eight. Is that right? Yeah, Oracle Linux eight. Great. Okay, so now let's find out what database is supported. So if we go to the database, and just just for reference, if we do click on the other tabs, you'll find interesting information about what's certified. So we are running Oracle WebLogic Server in this tab for client, and it says that for, as a client, you're supported if you're using Windows 7, 8, 10, and 11. It's just interesting to see. And if we click on the browser tab, you can see which versions of the browser are supported. So, I mean, I don't care about this because I'm just using the latest browser and I'm pretty confident it's going to be supported. So I'm using the latest Chrome and it says inside of here that Chrome 103 plus is supported. And if I go ahead and open up my Chrome and I click the about Google Chrome section, I can see I'm on 108. So I am definitely supported. Now to the database section, which is what we care about. And let's take a look at the first tab. So we are trying to use Oracle Identity Access Management. So let's deselect everything and choose that. And then we can see for 12214, which is the version we are going to install, we can see that there's two types of use, the RCU and the application itself. So this is saying the RCU is a repository creation utility. Basically what it does it's a, it's a tool that you do during install time only, and it just creates the database schemas and users. So it's purely for the installation setup one-time activity. And then this is for ongoing application runtime. So this is just Oracle Identity Manager running. And I mean, both of them have the same values. I can already see they all have the same values. Now let's go ahead and just choose the latest database because there's no reason not to. So we'll, we will choose Oracle Database 21C. And just to confirm, that is also listed under app, the application runtime 21C. So now we know all the versions that we are going to install. Okay, so before we actually start creating our virtual machines, I want to have a quick discussion about how much CPU and RAM you're going to allocate to each virtual machine. So we are going to create two virtual machines. One machine will be the database and one machine will be OIM. I like to separate them out into different virtual machines. So the CPU and the RAM, how much should you use? Well, I have got so much memory and I have got six CPUs in total with 12 threads. And my memory is just ridiculous. I have 64 gigabytes, but I want to make this tutorial applicable to all types of people. So if, for example, you have 16 gigabytes in the worst case, because I don't think you can get away with doing this with eight gigabytes, that would be very, very unrealistic. But even 16 gigabytes is a real difficult struggle, but I want to make this as flexible as possible for all my audiences. And therefore we are going to target a 16 gigabyte machine. But I want you to make sure at home that if you have a 32 gigabyte machine, you do something different. So let's say, let's create a new tab. Let's call this one 16 gigabyte column. And then let's call this one the 32 gigabyte column. Okay, so for CPU, it's pretty much how many CPU cores do you have? I've got six and 12 threads. I'm just going to allocate two threads and four threads and that leaves me plenty of threads for my host machine to operate normally but let's say you've only got four cores and four threads then i would suggest that you only do maybe one cpu for the database and one cpu for the oim machine so back to me if i have 16 gigabytes and i don't but i am going to build this tutorial as if i am 16 gigabytes that way everyone is supported that is following along so if i'm going to do 16 16 gigabytes, I'm going to do four gigs for my database, eight gigabytes for my OIM machine. And that leaves me with four, a measly four for my host operating system, which is really aggressive. So you could even push this down to let's say six, and then let's leave six for my host operating system. And this means that both these machines are going to be using a lot of swap space to achieve the memory demands of the applications running on those machines which means you're going to use a lot of disk activity to achieve this. But you can do some clever things, like if you're just testing or playing with Oracle Identity Manager and you don't need SOA to be started, you could maybe just launch your virtual machine
machine without SOA. And then you can get away with the less demand on your disk. So I'm going to choose four and eight to start with. And if you're on a 32 gigabyte RAM machine, then I would probably do something much nicer, such as eight here and 16 here, leaving yourself eight for the hosts should be enough. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Now we're ready to start building the virtual machines.